This video is all about creating a data gateway on-prem to send the content of the logs and flows on, of my system here on-prem all the way to the QROC instance in IBM Cloud. I'm following a documentation that my friend Sri created for me and this process is not simple and straightforward. So, a couple of things. Number one, as she's recommending here, schedule a maintenance period. They should not be deployed during this period. You'll see that when this process is running in the Curator console in here, on the Admin tab, you will see a request for deployment. Nobody should do it. The process does it automatically. In fact, if you deploy that, the changes, when you see it on the console, you will screw up the process. So make sure that if other people are using QRadar that they do not deploy changes. We're going to be downloading this QRadar ISO. Where do we get that? In the admin tab, we go here to hosted QRadar and we see an instance of a QRadar ISO that matches the current version of QRadar. So I'm downloading that and I'm going to proceed until this uh, actually finished unloading. Let's actually continue with the warnings, caveats, etc. that we have. Now, you need to have handy, probably on the clipboard, the fully qualified name of the console that you use to go there. I'm not showing mine because I'm not sure that I want to share this to the world, but when you go to your QRock, on the browser you're going to see you know, the, the the fully qualified name of that. Make sure you keep that handy. And it's not a bad idea to actually do a ping of that fully qualified name to see the IP address. You'll see that we'll use that IP address later. Even though the, you may, may or may not get reply, you at least will see the resolution of the IP address. You need to install only one data gateway at a time, of course. Now, and we're going to be doing that data gateway is going to be a virtual image here in my VMware system. The minimal size for that is 16 gigabyte. I went with 32. I think it's 100 gigabyte of this. I went with 200 and 8 cores. And of course, you have the proper uh, networking. I have mine under a NAT. Again, in this area of the requirements, I went above, I went with 32. If you put less than 16, the process is not going to let you install a data gateway, but it will say, oh, you want to install maybe an event collector or flow process, flow process or flow collector, or whatever. Uh, that's an indication that you don't have enough memory for the data gateway. Important is that you cannot, that data gateway cannot be on this uh, subnet range. Anything that is 192.168. whatever cannot be used here because that's the subnet that soft layer uses and there will be a conflict. You should have a NAT with a transparent proxy. M very important, your IP should be static, not dynamic. Okay? Because then stuff is not going to actually work. Both for the IP that you're going to be using the external IP for here, for example, here at home, I'm going to be using an external IP and the private IP is the one, in my case, is going to be 172.16.60.166, right? So both should not change, otherwise the process will stop working. The, you're going to be requesting a token and that token has hard-coded the IP ad, the public IP address that you have. So that cannot uh, change. And Curator doesn't, uh, doesn't go easy on changing, uh, you know, IP address of the boxes. So make sure that you don't change those. Now, you need to make sure that your networking people allows you to go from that VMware instance that we are creating over port 443 to QRock. And probably you already have that because you can hit the console uh, as I'm doing here in the back. 
Now you need to open a ticket with the folks at uh, QRock and request your public IP, the IP that's going to be accessing, that's going to have go through the NAT and it's going to go and it's going to be seen by QRock as the public address. That needs to be whitelisted. Not any IP can talk to that instance of QRock in the cloud, of your QRock in the cloud. So you need to whitelist that and you need to open a ticket to request that. I did that already and, I, and, and if you want to test whether this stuff actually works, you can open any, let's say, Unix Windows machine in your in the same subnet that you're going to be working. In my case, it's going to be the 172.16.60. Then open a Windows and do Telnet. Put the IP address of your QROC instance. Remember that I told you that if you do ping to the fully qualified name, you get the IP. Well, this is what we're going to be using it. If you do Telnet, put that IP space 443, you should get connected. That's an indication that the whitelisting process worked. I'm not going to show it in mine because, again, I don't want to show the public uh, IP of my QROC instance. At this point, do not ask for a token. You're going to need a token, but we are going to go through the process, get up to a point, and then you're going to request the token. That token takes a while to be created and approved and get ready to be used. has a lot of security features in it, and it's valid for two weeks. So we'll do this in the end. I mean, you need to put a strong password. This is, to me, not good enough. You should not go. I will go at least with, you know, 12 or 14 character password and stronger than that. This is at the very minimum and because this is on the cloud you don't want to go with such a weak uh, password. And that password should not be changed on the until the installation process completely continue. Okay? Now, of course, if you that that the, that password is also going to be tied to the token and so definitely you don't want to change that until you finish the installation. More considerations. The data gateway cannot be called anything curator. We're going to call ours data gateway. Okay, so let's get started with uh, the process. So I got my curator ISO image in here. So I'm going to go in my case and using uh, VMware Fusion, and I'm going to create a new instance of. I'm going to drag my curator ISO here and I'm going to click here continue. I'm not going to be using an easy install. I continue. Legacy BIOS is fine. I'm going to put this in a subdirectory that I call DG. Now for the configurations on memory, I'm going to go with 32 gigabyte of memory. I'm going to put a course. I'm going to go with the disk. I'm going to make that 200. I'm going to go with the network adapter. This is going to be specific on, on your particular environment. So we are ready here and we click start. I forgot to mention, but it's a, still a good time, and I actually hit enter here for this process. I'm not going to do anything here. I can, well, I can actually click here enter or I can wait until the machine will do it. So I'm clicking here, enter. And if I go to the to my browser, I open here the Curator Installation Guide. And this is the current version of uh, my QROC instance, 732. And if you go here under page 12, you're going to see the actual instructions. I prefer the note that uh, Sri gave me. But in case that you want to see the official documentation, it is here. 
Okay, copy the ISO image, and you see the the official installation process. Okay. I'm going to pause the video. This is going to take quite a bit of time, and I will uh, resume the recording when I see something relevant to mention. Well, that took around 33, 34 minutes. So I'm going to continue here by logging in to as root. That's the license agreement. If you agree with it, go to the end, hit in the space bar, and then type yes. So we're going to do an appliance install. Now, we want to select the option 7000, Event Collector Gateway. So we move with the cursor down, here's the space bar, escape to go to next, uh, tap I mean to go to next. Uh, this is a normal, so tap to next. That's standard stuff. We're going to be using IPv4 as the MAC address. The host name of this one is going to be Data Gateway. Again, it cannot be Curator. The IP address in my case is going to be 172.16.60.166. Netmask. Gateway the DNS, the primary DNS, the secondary is put Google. That's it. We tap until we get to the next. Oh, that has us. You can read there, it has to be qualified. So I'm going to put IBM.com on my demo system. We click uh, Next. And then this is going to be doing some networking validation. I'm going to post the video until that finishes. That didn't take very long, so I'm going to put the password. Oh, sorry, need to make sure I'm here. This is a demo system, so I'm putting a relatively short password. We click finished. in the video again. This is very important now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select, instead of co configure the connection now, I haven't requested my token yet. So I'm going to scroll down here, use the spacebar, and I will defer the introduction of the token for later. Okay. I click next, pausing the video once more. That did not take long either, a few minutes. We hit enter. And we are already into the console and ready to ask for that token. So open a ticket get a token and wait for that token, that email to be replied with the information uh, about uh, your token. So I just did, I'm lowering the screen here because I did the testing 
doing the ping to my fully qualified name of my QRock instance, the one that I get in the browser. Got the IP, even though I didn't get a connection, a reply back. And then what I did with that IP, I did telnet that IP space 443 and got connected. So testing to make sure that the white listing works and waiting for the token. Once the token comes, we're going to be issuing here this command slash opt curator bin set up curator host py manage host underscore setup interactive.p and that will enable give us the opportunity to introduce that token given because this is a native vmware console you cannot do uh, typically tap copy paste and stuff like that so you, you need to be careful once you get the token to make sure that you input it uh, correctly. I'm going to pause the video until I get the token and the email with the token back.